and this is where the rocket will bolt. Goes right here. It's physics, math, and engineering. Machine it, draft it, build it, test it, break it. Every time something new gets built, the entire world advances. Laying in bed at night, it's designing new parts, designing new suspension, designing new wings. Hey guys, <laughs> it's June, it's Sunday, it's the first week and we got snow on our mountains. Hey, I'm really pumped to show you the video I'm putting out today. Uh, we're gonna talk about something I'm doing really cool. We're putting a rocket in Scrappy BRS, ballistic recovery chute, explodes out of the top of the plane, puts up a parachute. We'll talk more about why I'm gonna do it. We're gonna talk to a friend who recently crashed his plane. He survived, we're gonna talk to him for a minute. And then we're gonna get right into building my parachute launch pad box. And then later video, we're actually building spare parts so I can actually pull the chute on the ground, explode it out the top. We'll put slow motion cameras up and stuff for that. It's gonna be really fun. So today, let's dive right into the video. We'll get back to work. Hey guys. All right, so we're here at the hangar working on Scrappy, and I brought a good friend of mine, hangar neighbor, just a couple down, James Salmon, great guy, been flying with him for years. James, tell me a little bit about what you fly today, your background in flying, just real briefly. Commercial pilot, fly for SkyWest, um, flown for 37 years. I've got over 30,000 hours of flying, a lot of general aviation flying. He's got float planes in his hangar, he's got multiple bush planes, he's built a bunch of bush planes, and uh, we've got a few places that are pretty spectacular, some mountaintops and flown together. Because I have built air, an airplane too and customized it to <laughs> yeah. <you> know about it. <laughs> he has, he's done a plane converted from certified to experimental right. Yellow Hawk. It's, uh, it's really actually really cool. It used to be a crop duster, stripped out and turned into a really good performing um, backcountry plane, so. Well, I had a an unfortunate experience with a beautiful Super Cub that I had. And um, I was en route to Johnson Creek last year and uh, we were cruising along and hit severe turbulence. And um, make the long story short, the right wing broke. I lost control of the airplane and we spiraled into the ground from about estimated 1,000 feet to 1,200 feet above the ground and I'm here to talk about it. My girlfriend was in, in the aircraft with me and um, it was a severe impact. Um, the airplane wasn't in a complete nose down, but it was uh, probably 30 to 40 degrees nose down spiral to the ground. Just before that last spiral, I, I told my girlfriend, this next one, we're gonna impact the ground and I pull full flaps and pull back just before impact. And after, I remember everything up to that point and then I was knocked out. It shattered my right ankle and it uh, broke my right forearm right here. And the impact was so severe, my three upper teeth and my jaw had been completely knocked out of my mouth. I found one of the teeth in the back in the baggage compartment I still have it. She ended up with a right broken ankle. She broke four ribs and uh, she broke her back. But uh, she woke up before I did and I was slumped over in my seat. She thought I was dead. And uh, so um, I said, let's get out of here. And um, we both exited the airplane and limped away from it. Or oh, absolutely thrilled and lucky to have James and his girlfriend with us. I guess one, it never, it doesn't always work out this way. We've had, I've been doing search and rescue for over 15, coming up on 20 years, I'd have to think about it. And um, I do a lot of the recoveries of these kinds of accidents. And I do a lot of the aircraft recoveries. And uh, unfortunately, um, even recently, some have been my really close friends. Um, and it isn't because someone's not a good pilot, 35,000 hours and 
every aircraft you can imagine, this guy's built and flown. And uh, things just happen. Some of the things I've read online, I had a guy come stop by my shop the other day and he saw that I was putting a parachute in Scrappy and he says, Mike, why would you put a parachute? And I said, because you never know what's gonna happen. And uh, sadly, I've seen enough complete wing failures, some in ice, some or other extenuating circumstances. Situation like James, unexpected air, hit a bump several times back to back harder than the wing could take. And those things shouldn't happen and they rarely do, but they do. And I've helped pick up the pieces of less fortunate situations than James. I told this guy why I'm doing it. I just want an option. Hey, I'm gonna try and land it. I don't wanna create any damage by pulling a chute. And if it doesn't hold up on impact, you know, at least I lived, but I'd rather try and land it. But if you don't have a choice, there's your backup plan. And that's why I'm doing a parachute. And he says, you wanna know something, Mike? I'm so happy you said that. And I hope you make a video about it. And I said, well, I'm gonna casually talk about it. He says, don't casually talk about it, Mike. I have a parachute in my carbon cup, but I don't tell anybody. And I keep it hidden and I don't talk about it. And I said, why on earth wouldn't you be proud of that? And he said, I mentioned online that I opted for a parachute in my carbon cub and I got absolutely hammered. Uh, you must not be a good pilot. Real pilots don't need parachutes. Uh, a cub can land anywhere. And I'm telling you, most of the time that is correct. A true bush pilot doesn't need it was a quote. Um, I'm telling you, this is a bush pilot. <laughs> And he has gone places that uh, would amaze a lot of people. And it had nothing to do with his piloting ability. But I tell you what, <laughs> if you had an option halfway down that spiral, what would you have done if you uh, had a shoot? I, oh, big time. You have an in-flight structural failure, and that's what I had. Yeah. And, you know, how many people survived that? Uh, not many. And it's, uh, it's something you don't want to go through, I guarantee you. Well, let's talk about why you wouldn't do a parachute. And I'll tell you why you wouldn't do a parachute. One, it's gonna cost you a couple of feet on your takeoff roll. It's gonna cost a couple of feet on your landing roll because you're gonna add about 70 pounds to your airplane. I tell you what, the places I'm going, if a couple of feet is determining whether or not I'm going in or not going in, I'm not going in. I've, I've already wrecked Draco by not giving myself enough margin of buffer for a a stronger gust than anticipated. And my fault, I totaled that aircraft and I'm lucky to be here. You just don't know what's gonna happen, but why not add another element of safety? The real cost of adding a parachute, the cost of the expense, quite frankly, it's minimal. It's, it's it, we'll spend 10,000 on avionics or 100,000 on avionics. Well, maybe not in a bush plane, but you'll spend money for all kinds of things and you'll spend money to ensure repairing the aircraft if you crash it. And over a couple of years time, that insurance is gone and none of that gives you the option to prevent what he went through. It just pays for the hospital bills to repair what he's going through today and repair the aircraft. But for a few thousand dollars, you can actually pull a parachute. How do you, how do you put a price on safety? I, and I, I think that's the greatest point. And that's part of what I'm trying to get at. I, I actually couldn't believe, it became almost an hour long conversation with this gentleman that came in that says he doesn't tell people he has a parachute because people make fun of him. I'm here to tell you, <laughs> anyone who wants to make fun of me putting in a parachute and scrappy, I'm just gonna smile. <laughs> it's gonna roll right off, right off my back. It doesn't bother me at all. I hope, that if you're considering a way to add any safety to your aircraft, parachute, tires, suspension, emergency onboard equipment, a food pack, all these things add weight. There's so many pilots I go fly with and everything's left at home when they're going out because they're going out with their buddies and they don't wanna pack an extra 50, 100 pounds. I'm telling you what, if you're down in a mountain somewhere, freezing to death, starving, to, starving, trying to get help, busted, broken, bleeding out, and you're, you're the last thing that's in your mind is, I wish I didn't bring my survival bag, my safety pack, my food, 
or I opted out on a chance to put a parachute in an aircraft. I mean, good grief, parachutes just became available. And um, sure, <laughs> people have pulled parachutes. And I agree, quietly I'll say, man, why did that guy pull that chute? But that's gonna happen. And maybe at the time, froze up, mentally lost it, panicked. Maybe the chute, when it didn't need to be pulled, still saved that person's life because maybe they wouldn't react like you might react. Some people in an emergency situation or have been in it, they knuckle down, they focus, they say, I got this and they'll stick it on a dirt road and I've done it. I've done it a couple times. But there are people that are different and they think they're gonna do a good in that panic situation and then the panic happens and things happen like James said, fast, right now. And then they freeze up and they don't know what to do. I tell you what, a big red handle that says, I'm gonna float you down, I might wreck your plane, but you're gonna walk away. It's a no brainer to me. So that's why I wanna talk about it. So if you consider a parachute, go get it. Don't care what, don't bother worrying about what people say. And for those of you who are ripping on people that are opting for added safety for any reason, maybe just keep it to yourself. Maybe your point's valid. But uh, I'm gonna suggest if you have an opportunity for any added safety equipment at the expense of a few feet, ground roll, takeoff roll, do it. What do you think, James? Do it. That's gonna work perfect. Let's get the glue and nails. I do wanna show you one real quick trick. So I'm actually gonna lay up the outside of this box because I'm gonna be able to glue Screw this together, round the edges, sand it, bond it, make a really great mold. But you never ever get this carbon fiber off the outside of this. So basically I'm making a box, this shape with these crop corners, rounded edges for the parachute to go in out of carbon fiber. But if I wrap this, close off the bottom and try to get it off, never happen. So what I'm gonna do now that I've got these all cut with the 22 and a half degree angle, everything all done, I'm actually gonna cut this all the way down, every one of these, all the way through by the last 16th of an inch. So I'm leaving just a hair on the outside. What that will do is when I make this box, when I wanna get the wood out, I'll put a screwdriver between the carbon fiber and the wood on the outside of the box and because I'll be cut almost all the way through, as soon as I put that in and drive the screwdriver down, this wood is gonna snap outward and just fold into the box. And I can literally fold every one of these sides inward and then pull the wood out. And that's the only way you'll get it off. You never pull the carbon off. So anyway, this will be a collapsible one-time use mold. So. I only need to make one parachute box, so this works perfect. Back to work. This is where I'm gonna cut this box so it collapses. There's about a 16th of an inch right there. I'm gonna cut all the way through except for that much, and that's gonna snap right in half to get it out. All right guys, we're doing a two-part mold for this parachute. This part is gonna be uh, layered so that I can router the edges and make a kind of a C-shaped closed box. And then the parachute box is gonna come off of it. So basically it's gonna have one part going one direction towards the side of the plane and have all the radiuses I need. And the other part jettisons inside the luggage area where the parachute's gonna be to hold the parachute. So might not make sense now, but it will in a minute, but we're basically gonna start wet carbon going one way on one part wet carbon going another way on another part, take those two while they're wet, attach them, microfiller the joint, and then carbon between the two to attach them. So they're all cured together all at once, even though I got carbon going multiple directions on two different opposing pieces. So I hope that makes sense. Back to work. All right guys, so we do a kind of a compound mold. This, is part of the wall inside the luggage compartment where the parachute's gonna mount. So I'm using this 
to carbon fiber, go down the sides, and then later I'll trim the arcs and the radius that matches the side of the plane. That would be the mounting pad. Once I get a couple layers, actually three, I've labeled it to remind myself, three on here, I'll have this stood up. Pull my tape apart. <laughs> I'll have this stood up and I'll wrap three layers on this entire box. While this is wet and this is wet, I'll take the carbon box, set it on here. I've got the measurements laid out for how this will go. And now this box will sit like that. This is my returns for the bolt point. That way I've got this carbon and this carbon bonding together because I will have wrapped this entire box set it on wet. Then, while it's still wet, I'll put a little bit of micro bubbles bead to radius this outside edge, and then I'll wrap three more layers over all of it so that this three plus the three under here, under here, the three on here, then when I finish three more on the outside that carry over the top, it becomes six, and also six in the middle. So this could be a compound part, Halfway through that process, the parachute's gonna have all its weight right here. This stands upright. And so I wanna reinforce this bottom so it's more than six layers. So when I got three down to here, I'll put this honeycomb, my pre-cut, pre-beveled the edges. I'll micro this, put a little bit of micro bubbles around the edge, and then wrap the last three layers around this. So we're gonna have a part that closes out multiple directions of box. Now, you can see this box runs really long. That's on purpose. The inside of Scrappy has a big arc to the top of the dome that we made on the tail section of the plane. And I'm running this long so that I can set this in, slide it up, scribe the arc into it and cut it off. So this is seven inches long, but the rest of this is exact. So we got a lot of work to do. It's gonna take a little bit, but lots of parts all at once, but it's definitely gonna be strong. So let's get to work. All right, guys, I am, just buttoning up the last couple layers on the box. So this has got three, this has three. Then we stack this one on that one. So where the two meet is six layers, but the outer is all still three. So what's gonna work out really well is now I'm gonna pull this tape off. That was my guide of where these needed to go. And I've got this radius fill I need to do. That little corner in here is where I routered the wood and made a, a, a round. What's gonna work out perfect is when I pull this wood out of the middle, inside the parachute box will have nice rounded edges. There will be nowhere for the parachute to catch as it slides out. But I wanna now spread a little micro bubbles I've got ready right here and I'll spread this into this corner and I'll make a radius this direction. So there'll be a radius inside the box, radius outside the box. And then the next three layers will go from here, over that radius, over the top, back down and over the other side. And then when I put the bolts through this to attach it to the metal frame of the aircraft, I'm actually bolting the box and this together. So I have a chemical bond because I made the two components at the same time but I'm also going to bolt between the layer that chases the two, so I'll get a mechanical bond. So this sucker will go nowhere, and I've got two crazy parts all at once. All right, so the way I'm doing this honeycomb bottom, the parachute's going to weigh about 70 pounds. I had to do a lot bigger parachute because of the big motor, how much scrap he's going to weigh with all the extra things I'm doing to it. So a standard carbon cut parachute weighs about 42 pounds. I need to make sure that all the weight on the bottom, this thing stands up, on the bottom of this is extra strong. So I've got my three layers on the backside underneath this honeycomb. And while it's all still wet, I spread about a 16th of an inch of micro and I, I thinned it down so it's a little bit runny because you can do it super wet or like you can make it like Play-Doh and play with it. I made it a little bit runny so I could do a nice skim coat and then this could just push into it so I got a really good bond. And then I had cut the edges tapered, and now I'm filling the edge with micro to get a really strong corner. I've cut holes in the middle, and then I'm gonna put the next three layers on this side. I'll base this nice and wet, put on wet carbon, pull it tight this way. And then after I've pulled it tight this way, I'll push it in these circles 
and touch the carbon into that micro so that I've got a little more bond between those. Now, since this is all solid wood and a big heavy base, I can still vacuum bag this, but I got to hit to work fast or we'll never get a chance of doing it. Um, it's still all wet. I got plenty of time, but uh, I better get at it. It's <laughs> back to work. This might be stubborn. Maybe not. <laughs> this will work. Two step. One time hold. <laughs> That's what I always do. It seems like someday maybe I'll do a production plane and make permanent multi-use mold, but today, scrappy mold. <laughs> Blow sawdust to my face. All right, so the bottom came out great. You can see that there's a wall separating the two boxes made at the same time. So now the real question is, this came out really quite easy, is if my breakaway cuts I did work. So in theory, I should be able to hit right here and pop these inwards, so. Good enough. <laughs> That's really just mostly tape holding it now. So the breakaway work. And uh, on one side at a time, we'll get this off. Then we'll weigh the part. All right, that turned out awesome. Pretty cool. I got some sanding and trimming to do. But this shape, lightweight, if I made it in two separate parts, which would have been easier to make the mold, but it would have added weight trying to bond this to this. And let me show you where this goes. This is going inside there, way up in this upper corner. And most of this all gets cut off. The parachute's about this big from here to here. So I ran this long because of the arc at the top of my aircraft. I wanted it to trim up and chase that arc. So that's why I made it big. This funny angle you see here, is this angle coming down the bar, making this level inside the aircraft. So that's why it looks like that. Most of this edge gets cut off at the top. <clears throat> I only need about one inch, because it actually hangs on top of that bar. And then this edge here will get the arc of the round of the aircraft cut into it. But that way, when this box goes in, it's already trimmed, fitted, perfect and all in one part. So um, I still have a bit of work to do, trimming to do. I will take, after I cut this line, matching the shape of the top of the plane, I will lay up another 
bit of carbon fiber that comes up the side and arcs into that transition so that I can attach this perimeter to the lid of the plane so I can bolt it down the side, across the bottom, up this side and to the lid. And then I can put a parachute, 60, 70 pounds in here, not worry about it at all, totally sealed. Um, anyway, pretty stoked. Went really fast, really good, extremely lightweight. Got a solid honeycomb bottom on it so it won't flex. Anyway, let's get back to work. <laughs> all right, well. That stays. No Clecos. It's just snapped on. That, that's a pretty good fit considering the leverage is trying to pull it off the wall. Um, this big pad you see sticking out here when you're making a mold, it probably didn't make sense. I decided not to go into it till the end. But this funny extra square box sticking way out here has a purpose. I'm putting a metal frame behind it, some big bolt points. And this is where the rocket will bolt goes right here, and then this entire lid will be exploded off when the rocket goes off. May it never go off. <laughs> I plan, if I have any problems, I plan on landing. Hopefully this is a big giant waste of space, but you know what, can not ever be too safe? I'm gonna give up the penalties of the weight, but that's pretty cool. I'm gonna have a rocket in my rocket, scrappy. <laughs> Let's get to work. We are doing arts and crafts. I'm making a template to cut the parachute box to chase the exact shape of the top of the airplane. So right here next to me is the top of the aircraft. And this should now fit. Okay, that's my template. And now I'm gonna go slide it up to where the box, if you look up there real quick, See the box sticking up? That's where I ran the parachute box high. And I'm gonna make this template and trim it off. Okay, so that should be the exact shape of the top of the plane. So I'll trim this off, put the top on, and just kind of keep fitting it till it's perfect. Then I can do the last bit of carbon fiber for this to be done, which is lay up carbon from here onto the top all the way around all the sides so then I can bolt it from the top so I can stand on this already but once I hook it to the top it'll be even stronger and uh, then I can make a top an explosion remove top that the rocket that sits in this pad can knock off the top pull the parachute out so we're getting closer a few more hours All right, guys, I'm gonna leave it here. We got a lot more work to do on the parachute. That filming is actually weeks ago. Scrappy's still further ahead. So we're gonna catch up on more videos. I've got a handful of them. So we're gonna try and put them together quick and get them out while we keep building this aircraft. So like, follow, subscribe, follow along. I'm getting back to work.